Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, manifest, plan and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you guys it's surely coming to you all for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you. Before you leave, definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girl and what's going on, yeah? And speaking of coming and learning, you guys, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. We're a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain you guys all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys, so today is Wednesday. You guys know on Wednesdays, hump day, we normally drop our podcast collaborations, and this one's no different. This one is going to be, and bear with me, guys, she has a long name for her podcast, but it's, I'm going to shorten it, sorry. It's the Black to Black Show podcast. It's, it's actually the Black to Black Show uh, Radical Faith. I'm sorry, I don't want to butcher her name, her podcast show name, but it's the Black to Black Show podcast, and it's by the lovely Miss Tina Young, uh, a blessed opportunity to come on her platform and share my story and testimony, as well as celebrate Juneteenth with her, and so uh, Juneteenth is still fresh out the pod, just past this Monday, and so we had a great time talking about Juneteenth, the history of it, uh, uh, affirmative action and how you know the state is now trying to get rid of affirmative action and our thoughts on it as well as talking about my book what if a controversial paradigm shift so you guys without further ado let's get into it let's look, take a look at the audio interview and when I come back on we'll talk a little bit more about it and what else is going on in different well yeah here it is check it out hello welcome to black to black talk show have different here, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me, Tina. Happy to be here. Oh. Hi to everybody out there watching. Yes, my name is Different. It's spelled D I F E R N T. Okay. So how uh, how's your Juneteenth uh, weekend going? Busy, 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 busy. Um, yesterday, uh, Roland Martin he had an event in here in Houston, and so I've been trying to make contact with him, uh, just trying to network and get my name out there here so I can get on his show. And so I went out there and did that. And today I'm meeting with you, lovely Miss Tina, with the Black to Black talk show. So again, just happy to be here, putting in your grind and working. And uh, I don't know, just whatever you, you want to ask okay. me, you know. Okay, uh, so just tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us your story. Right. Okay, so again, as I stated, my name is Different. I'm an author, motivational speaker, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. And we're a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain you guys all at once. So um, uh, I guess you say background, um, I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 32 years old. Um, I guess as far as my hobbies, I love, you know, ATV, traveling all over the world, um, reading, writing, meditating, you know, networking, spending time yeah. with my nephew. Um, yeah. I don't know. I can keep going on, so just let me know. This is yeah, I've seen there. that you did some travel and you did some uh, uh, school out of state, right? Yes, I studied abroad um, back in 2012. I went to Kim Young University. Um, I spent about four months over there in the fall of 2012, and within that opportunity, I got to travel to eight other countries including Europe and China and Japan. And that's where my travel book was planted. And uh, fast forward to a couple of years later, uh, I was traveling the world, you know, living life until the pandemic happened. And like everybody else, I had to get some wins to sit down. <laughs> so, um, but it, it was a joy to do. I can't wait to do it again. Um, it's just how I would have, you know, I would have went back to traveling, you know, Post pandemic, however, just life happened for me in 2021. You know, as I stated to you before, um, I lost five people back to back to back in my family, and including my mother being the last person. She died in my arms the day after Christmas. And so um, I've been working on my mental health and making sure that I grieve healthy, healthy in a healthy manner, if you will, but not uh -huh. just for my mother, but, you know, for the other family members that I lost as well. And okay. so, um, once I feel like, you know, I do that and have a grip on that. It's coming up on two years since she's passed. And so I think after, you know, maybe a couple of months or maybe even 
for this coming, you know, this December, um, that's my birthday month, I'll usually travel. And so maybe, you know, sometime again, I'll travel. Travel again. Okay. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. There's uh, so much stuff going on as well. So I have to be mindful of that too. Yeah. So uh, what are some new projects you got going, coming up or? Well, and, uh, I wouldn't say new, but I've been for, for the, for the latter part of my life or my, my past two years now, 2021, been promoting my business and my book, um, which came about in a funny way. I, it did so with me getting my mental health in check. And so um, I guess how can I explain myself is just by telling a little bit about my childhood and how I came up. Um, I guess if you can say just um, I came up, you know, with a pretty good childhood up until the time I was around 11 years old. And then, you know, me and my family, unfortunately, we ended up homeless on the street for the next three years um, to where we lived basically pillow to post, sleeping everywhere from, you know, cars, parks, you know, bus stops, and shelters, and even at one point sleeping at a crack house um, until, you know, I was the age of 14 and the family members secretly placed me in foster care. And none of my other family members knew where I was. And, you know, for the first six months, I tried my hardest to come home. But it wasn't until I found out from another form of foster kid that, you know, if I stayed in, you know, the care and then I aged out, then the state of Texas would pay for my tuition to college. And so mm-hmm. right there, a light bulb went out in my head, you know, and I just had to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just made that decision to spend the next four years in foster care. That was, you know, a trial in itself because, you know, I got shuffled around in the system, had to, you know, unfortunately fight with a lot of kids you know coming up in their way as well as dealing with my own personal issues and mind you I'm a teenager just coming up you know trying to learn myself and learn the ways of life yeah so it was a lot to deal with um but in the end you know God blessed me because I went through that situation and then I came out of it with the full ride to you know my choice of the college I wanted to go to and I went to Sam Houston State University yeah big shout out to the bad cat uh, yeah went there. <laughs> And that's where I got the opportunity to study abroad. And like I said, I got to travel uh, to other countries within there, as well as uh, my motivational speaking book was planted with my own student organization. I started, uh, paid for it. Um, we went to the different high schools, you know, talking about the importance of education to the different students in there. I would share my testimony with them. And, you know, normally, most of the time towards the end, kids would come up to me and say, well, wow, I didn't know you went through that. I'm going through the same thing. Or I yeah. didn't know, you know, state of Texas would pay. I'm going to go to college now. And so that's yeah. where my motivational speaking book was planning. You know, I know with my testimony and sharing it, I can inspire others. And so, um, but with all that being said and done, and, you know, and even graduating with a bachelor's degree in international business, you know, having two minors in economics and communication, even getting my in entrepreneurship, <laughs> even doing that and, and becoming a real estate agent, all that didn't mean a thing if I was still dealing with, you know, emotional trauma, trauma issues and things mm-hmm. from my past that plagued me and then followed me throughout my childhood, throughout my teenage years, throughout my college phases and into my adulthood. Um, it, it, it came with me, a lot of the baggage. And like I said, uh, with coming up in that chaotic environment for me for three years, it was normal for me to see chaos. And when I was taken out of that environment, I was actually placed in good foster homes, you know, with black families that were educated, had degrees, good mm-hmm. houses and good paying jobs. And I'd never seen that before. Yeah. I didn't know that, that was an option for us until I had been exposed to that. So that was also another reason what made me say, I'm going to stay in, you know, foster care and, 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 and do get out because you mm-hmm. are going to hang around. And so, um, being placed in those situations, it was new for me. And I felt, you know, it was too good to be true. True, so, yeah. You know, nothing good lasts. And so you get these thoughts in your head that, you know, hey, I'm going to be the captain of my own ship. I'm going to decide when and where to navigate and when it's time to sink it. And that's just what I did. I had began, you know, a road of self sabotage and it would mess up every good little thing that came my way. I had that mindset of, I had to get them before they get me. And, you know, I messed up a lot of good relationships and put a lot of, pushed a lot of people away and became that off-putting person that nobody liked to be around. And like I said, that followed me throughout my teenage childhood, excuse me, my childhood, teenage and college years and to where when I was an adult, I didn't know how to, you know, handle what I went through and it just carried on into my career-wise. Uh-huh. There was a situation where I um, had a meeting with a well-connected person and 
I, I let the you know negative thoughts in my head get to me, you know, and, mm-hmm. and telling me I'm not good enough and this, that, and the third. And I ended up showing up late to that meeting on purpose, and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth, and they didn't really want to deal with me after that. And for the longest years past, I would sit back and dwell on that situation as, as well as other situations that I had sabotaged. And mm-hmm. one day I had to look myself in the mirror, almost looking towards 30, and just had to face that ugly truth that, you know, whatever I went through in my past as a child, as a teenager, you know, as a young adult, it may or may not have been my fault. It may have not been in my control. But as an adult now, it is on me to fix that problem and, and, and change that situation. You know, I can't expect the persons or people who have hurt me in the past to come back and apologize or mend my broken heart. It's on me to fix. And so I just had to dismiss that notion that black people don't do therapy. And yeah. that's why I right here went to go and do some therapy and in doing so. Um, that is what led to me writing the book and starting my business, talking with my therapist. They encouraged me to get back into writing and journaling and doing so. Um, mind you, this is when the pandemic happens. We're stuck in the house, can't go anywhere. Yeah. I'm bored, and I'm depressed, I ain't got nothing else to do. And then May 25th, 2020 happened, the day George Floyd dies. Um, and he's from Houston as well. I'm from Fifth Ward, he's from Third Ward. So when they were doing the protest, I wanted to get involved. I used to want to take my uh, nephew who was on the spectrum. I wanted to take him so he could be aware of what was going on. However, when the time came to, I didn't get Kofi because I was scared. However, I thought about it in a much bigger scheme of things as to where I wanted my voice to be heard, not just in this moment of time when this protest is going on. I wanted to be heard after this protest is done. I want my voice to be heard after I'm gone. So talking with God, praying with him and asking and meditating and, and asking him to show me what can I do to use my voice and, and to be heard and to get the word out there. And what can I do to get people's attention? And this is what he showed me, you know, when I'd be sitting down watching, you know, movies, or watching little clips, it would come to me. I would ask these questions, what if? And little by little, I just started writing it out on paper. I started this in June, 2020. And by December, 2020, I had the manuscript done and I took it to my lawyer. She read it, you know, gave praises and, and asked that question that threw me off my high horse. You know, just, you know, when no matter how many degrees you got under your belt, no matter how much work you've done and gone all over the world, you're never too young, too old, and, and have too many notches under your belt to stop or start learning new things and keep learning. Yes. And so she asked that question, well, what's the name of your business? And I kept telling her my book, the name of my book is What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift? And she was like, well, I don't think you understand. In order to sell a product to the public, you have to have an LLC, uh, you know, a small business. And so I had to learn that, you know, yeah, life come around, think you know everything, and knock you off your high horse and, and let, remind you that you don't. And so I had to hit the ground running, uh, T, and, and learn a small business, how to run it in Texas. And by March 2021, Third Eye Entertainment LLC was born. And I came up with the name Third Eye Entertainment because for me, I'm very – a person that's very in tune with my chakras, I believe in chakra balance, chakra healing, meditation. Um, I'm also into exploring actual projection. And so I, I strongly believe when you have your heart and your mind in tune with one another, you're able to see things more clear. Yes. Pray for the spirit of discernment, and God shows you what you need to do and what you have to do. You're able to accept it a lot better and, and, and do what you have to do in order to get to the next level of your life. So when you have your heart, your mind in tune that lets me to unblock your third eye chakra and to do what you have to do whatever it is that you want to do in life so that's where third eye entertainment comes from okay so the entertainment part what do you do for the entertainment what is that so with, like i said with third eye we're again a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through products and services so as far as the service side um we talk about social issues including you know systemic racism you know, injustice, domestic violence, you know, child sex trafficking, LGBTQ issues. Um, every month I do a social awareness pertaining to that month. So, for instance, you know, May is the month of mental health awareness. So, on all month of May, I did upload content on our social awareness in regards to mental health. April is Autism Awareness Month. You know, February, Black History Month, you know, something always going on. And so I do a social awareness blog in regards to societal issues that, you know, people often like to sleep under the rug and don't want to talk about. Uh, also, June is the month of HIV awareness, uh, as well as with pride. And so I'll be doing something 
I have a collaboration coming up with a, a LGBTQ podcast, and this is my first one I'm excited to do. So I'll be mm-hmm. doing that one next week. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's uh, a myriad of things. I'm more than just one option, and as well as with the entertainment, like I said, I traveled all over the world, just about 50 countries. So on Fridays, I do my travel content. I just uploaded my um, trip to Costa Rica. Uh, I have trips like my trip to Nairobi, Kenya, Egypt, Colombia, mm-hmm. Ireland, you know, Amsterdam. Okay everywhere so just, yeah. again go to my youtube channel difference world yt come and learn and you'll see uh, all my other social media uh, my, excuse me my my content that i upload as well as with the entertainment i do pop culture reviews and movie reviews with my nephew as well okay uh so i know you talk uh you know they're talking about uh uh getting rid of affirmative action what do you think about that for us? the school says uh the people going to school colleges and stuff well, I don't think we shouldn't be surprised by it, but it, I mean, it's it's another you know another gimmick they another stunt they pulling to try mm-hmm. to hold us back. Mm-hmm. But you know, what's real will prosper. There's nothing that you can do to stop it. You know, yes. no matter how hard you may try, we still coming. You know, what's for you is for you, and for the our people, our culture, the black culture. Yeah, you know, they can't take what they did not give. We've been you know, given it's just in our blood. Yeah. So as far as with affirmative action and, and, and stoppage of people are going to college, I, I don't want to say, because I, I went to like a diverse college. I went to Sam Houston and it was very diverse. Um, but I was also, when it came to choosing, I, I was real set on going to a HBCU. But then the reason why I didn't is because in reality, in real life, the life, it, you know, is full of, you know, it's multicultural, it's not just with black people. So that's why I didn't yeah. go to HBCU. But I see with the affirmative action as to, you know, why it would push a lot of our people to HBCUs. And I wouldn't be mad at that if that yeah. happened. If they were to stop affirmative action, go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't uh-huh. worry about trying to get into a college. Even though there are some good pristine colleges out there that are, uh, there's none HBCU. There are plenty of HBCUs that are, you know, top notch and up there and well respected. And so, why not attend one of them? I wish I would have attended the HBCU, but um, in the grand scheme of things, I don't regret not attending the HBCU because now I'm able to network with all people from all yes. backgrounds of life, not just with people of my culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think you were telling me about it. You have something uploaded today that you put on your YouTube channel. What did you upload today? Yes. Uh, so, on Sundays, and I have a, a, a content schedule. Again, you got to go to my YouTube channel and check it out. So, Sundays, we do our spiritual awareness. Mondays, we do our motivational. Tuesdays, our social awareness. Wednesdays, I do our, uh, my podcast collaboration. Thursday, pop culture. And Fridays, uh, travel. And on, on Saturdays, sometimes I do a live. Um, so, but on Sundays, I, like I was telling you before we started, um, I do my spiritual content and I was just uploading one that has, um, it talks about the power of moving on and how God commands us to move on from our past and things that have hurt us, mistakes that we have made, how to let go of people that are no good for us in order for us to have the wonderful life he has planned for us. Isaiah 43, 18 states, do forget, for, excuse me, forget sorry forget the former things do not hold on to the past let go and move on for god loves you and he has a wonderful life planned for you and so you have to remember that and i just learned that scripture and so um yeah. that's something now i have to you know memorize and get stuck in my head because that's a part of my healing process as well and keeping my mental health in check is letting go of the past and, and stop revisiting as well as reprogramming my mind and so uh, it's, it's a spiritual walk for me as well. You know, I, I try to practice what I preach. So when I put these content out, I'm not only trying to motivate and encourage others. I'm doing this for myself. Um, I've noticed that, you know, in order to help myself, it helps by helping others. You know, yeah. you the focus off yourself and try to help others and motivate others. It comes back to you in a good way. And so that's what I've been trying to do with how you know, I deal with the process of, you know, grieving my mother and as well as my other family members, as well as, you know, dealing with, you know, my depression on end, just in life, still having things to go through. Um, like I said, when it comes with 
Third Eye Entertainment and Difference World, we advocate heavily for mental health awareness, including uh, in the black community. And I just want to take this time for anybody out there listening and watching that's dealing with any type of mental health, you know, stress, illness, or anguish, to please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, being if you need to talk with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, dropping a bad habit, cutting people off from me, you know, well, mending broken bridges, even getting on medication if that is what needs to be done. Yes. Whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep yourself with, from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources that I'm about to share with you, please feel free to do so. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you guys can visit 988-lifeline.org. And remember, although I am giving you these mental health resources, it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, nobody else. Lastly, I want you guys to remember whatever trial and tribulation that you are going through at this time in your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option, so therefore it's not worth it, so don't do it. Yes, that's great. Thank you for that. Yeah. that. <laughs> uh, so uh, on your uh, on the book that you wrote, how do they can contact you to uh, purchase a copy or uh, get a copy of your book? Okay, well, uh, just to give you a little background about the book first, uh, the book, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, have it right here, is a book that's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America, and I've done it through graphic and provocative illustrations. And um, so again, I want you guys to be advised that this is intended for mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. It's going to be fire, Blakey. You'll be okay, because that's the point of it all, to have these conversations that need to be had, especially with Juneteenth being tomorrow. Uh, we need to have these conversations that are often swept under the rug. Uh, people like to turn a blind eye to, and that's just what this book does. It flips the script. It plays the racial reversal in a most controversial manner. And the reason why I chose the controversial route is because I noticed that controversy gets a lot of attention. People mm -hmm. flock to that before they flock to anything else. And so... Once I hit them with that attention grabber, the controversial style, and I get their attention, they'll see that it's more than just about rubbing people the wrong way and, and, and ruffling feathers and ring, unringing bells. And, and so it's more than so talking about unity. For those that can make it past the first three paradigms, I have them set up in four paradigms, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And those that can make it through the first three and have common sense to know what it is that I'm really talking about and the points that I'm trying to make, they'll see it in hypothetical that it's more than, you know, just about, like I say, rubbing people the wrong way. It's about unity, accountability, acknowledgement, coming up with ways where we can create systemic change instead of dwelling on systemic racism. And so, um, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, like I said, the book, I've written it in a excuse me, a thought-provoking way. I don't like saying controversial. I say mm -hmm. thought-provoking because it yes. will get your attention and will, you know, have you sharing your opinion. And so I have set up in four main paradigms, historical, political, precedent, and hypo excuse me, hypothetical. And in each of these paradigms, I'm asking questions in regards to actual events, historical events and deaths that have occurred in the African-American community in America over time. And so, for instance, in historical paradigm, one of the questions I asked right off the bat, what if in 1619, Africans started dealing in illegal slave trading, whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships to America? And then you'll see that thought-provoking illustration where you have the white slaves in shackles and chains and some trying to jump from ships like our people did and with the black slave owners and slave masters, ship masters, whipping them. And you have that all throughout the book, asking these types of questions with the historical events and deaths that have occurred in the African-American community. Um, from down on from, you know, political deaths to, you know, precedent death, what's going on, you know, such as, you know, with Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, you know, 
all these protests we happen to have, you know, with Breonna Taylor, I have them included as well. And so, uh, and as well, it's not just about black and white. That's another thing I want to know. It's not just about black and white. It, uh, I have something for everybody. I include the Native Americans, Hispanics, Muslims, uh, LGBTQ uh, community is included as well. And so, like I said, it's not just about, you know, peeing people off. It's more than that. I'm trying to get your attention in the way I'm going about it. It is a controversial way. But again, for those that, you know, have, you know, enough sense and the uh, uh, maturity to make it through the first three, you know, tough paradigms and make it to hypothetical that it would see. It's not just about, you know, the, the rough side of it. It's about the betterment of the cause. Okay, this happened, but what can we do now to change and move forward? Yes, you know, and okay. I'm well aware that change doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen with just one person moaning and complaining. It takes a community coming together time and time again. And so, you know, what if, Tina, what if this is a generation that plants the seed for the next generation? And I'm well aware that, you know, there's a lot of people that dislike this book. But like I said, you go when you celebrate it and not when you tolerate it. And I learned that from number 45. Uh, this man, he's, he was in office for four years, caused all that chaos. And at the end of it, he still had people, you know, rooting for him, good, bad, and ugly. And what that has taught me is that no matter what you sell it to the public, it's always somebody out there that's willing to buy it. So, again, yeah. you go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. All right, so yeah. 15 being the perfect time for me to promote my book and, you know, the message that I'm trying to bring, I'm going to go all in to any and everybody. And I know my people will understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this one, uh, so how did, how did they purchase it? So you go to my website, differenceworld.net. Again, that's spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T-S-W-O-R-L-D.net. And you'll go there and you'll get your copy there. Uh, you can also leave reviews for me, um, I'm, as well as for my YouTube channel. I try to direct a lot of my traffic to my website and my YouTube channel as I'm trying to build. Uh, so go to, again, my YouTube channel, Difference World YT. Come and learn and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So when I drop content... Uh, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn what's going on. Um, other than that, as well as for anybody out there that's looking for motivational speakers, or if you're looking to do any uh, future collaborations, you can look me up on my website and you book your girl. I'm free of charge. As well as check out all my other social media handles, uh, my Instagram, my Twitter. I'm learning TikTok, you guys, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to study it before I jump into it. You know, I'm, I like to study, you know, or do my, my homework before I just jump into it and, and Go Hail Marys in the sky. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where you guys can find me. And again, I appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming and don't stop. Uh, uh, thank you again, Miss Tina, for having me on your show. I truly appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, everybody out there, again, listening and watching, remember to keep your mental health in check. And uh, as well as when it comes to going after your dreams and goals, remember you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and it will come to you. Different world. Come and learn. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, the name of my show is called Bodacious Dreams with a Radical Face. So what is your bodacious dream? To win the Pulitzer Prize for this book, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift. Oh, okay. That is going what? to ring the world's bell. Uh -huh. Put me on the map to take care of me and my family. Bring me, you know, generational wealth and create residual income. Mm, okay. And I become one of the top influential motivational speakers as well. Okay. It's a lot. I have a lot of dreams and goals. <laughs> a lot of dreams and goals. Yes, that, that's like, good, though. I'm a dreamer, too, so I am there with you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and radical faith, when I say radical faith, some people say um, it's not just, just religion. It's also faith in yourself. So, you yes, have built absolutely. that faith in yourself, right? That's so exactly tell us what a little I was bit about that. And it's funny that you say radical faith because, like I said yesterday, um, I went to go meet with Mr. Uh, Martin at his event. He had all the way on the south side on South Post Oak, um, and I'm, like I said, I'm I'm on the east side of Houston, and I had my nephew with me, and so and I don't have a car right now, and so we had to I had to do what I had to do and step out on radical faith and just believe in myself and in God, and yeah. so and I. Before I got there, I was like, man, I don't know if anybody's going to be there, if I'm even actually going to get a chance to meet him, because I tried to before, earlier this year, when he was here for the voting, and I didn't get the chance to, and so what my intention was to do was to go there, network, pass out my business cards, try to get some reviews and reactions for my, like, I was going to do a YouTube video to get my reviews and reactions from people looking at my book, as well as talk with him, 
but it didn't work out that way. He, when yeah. I walked in, me and him, me and my nephew walked in, they were already in panel and speaking, and so he was already on stage talking. So what I had to do was wait till it was over with, and you know, everybody was meeting and taking pictures with him. I just had to wait my turn, and when it came up, I walked up to him and met him, and I was like, Mr. Martin, I'm here. You know, I've been emailing this man and, and actually having conversations with him, correspondence for over a year now yeah. about getting on his podcast show. And so I was like, well, now you see my face and now you know I'm serious about it. And so I'm one step closer. First, it started off as me emailing and yes. thinking he wasn't going to respond. Then he actually started to respond. Uh -huh. And now I'm, I've am i actually met with him face to face and have a picture of him with my book and my nephew. And so, uh -huh. and I wrote it a year ago. I, I, I wrote it on my Twitter. I, uh, Mr. Martin, you don't know me by now, but I'm uh, right now, but I'm going to be on your show soon. So yeah, my motto is Talk it to every radical faith. <laughs> my is. motto is manifest, plan, prepare. And when I say manifest, plan, prepare, that means uh, fixing yourself from the inside out, preparing yourself from the inside out with manifest, manifest, remove all the negative doubt. And they say, I can't do it. Remove all that from your mind. Reprogram your mind with faith and positive affirmations that you can't do it. When you're planning it, plan it out on paper. Plan, you know, how you're going to achieve the goal. Have a backup plan. Have an exit plan. Can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it's going to come. And when it does, just know that whatever trial and tribulation you're going to face, you're going to get through it. This too shall pass. So don't trip or don't, don't, don't falter to it. Keep going. Yeah. As well as when it comes to preparation, I say prepare from the inside out. You get your house in order from the inside out. Go get your mental health in check. Go get your physical health in check. Go get your spiritual health in check. Go fix your financial house. Uh, like I said, cut people off from me, you know, well, men and broken bridges, uh, letting go of the past and moving on from it so that whatever you're manifesting and planning for when it comes to you, you will be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. You won't squander it like how I did when I was younger and in my 20s when I had a, good, a lot of good opportunities coming my way and I squandered it. Why? Because I was afraid of it. I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't feel that I was yes. worthy of it. And so manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever it is in life that you're feeling you're destined for, and it will surely come to you. So yours yeah. is radical faith, mine is manifest, plan, and prepare. And yesterday, yeah. I had full-on radical faith, my girl. Like yes. <laughs> oh, that's it great. worked out for me because in the end, and I also did some networking. I, I, I met with the newspaper, a, a, a lady that owned the article here in Houston, the Defender, and I gave her my business card, and we talked. And so I got to network. I got to meet Mr. Martin and hand him my business card and let him see my book and just let it be known that I'm going to be on the show and I wasn't going to stop. He also noted that next year what he's trying to do is get a permanent uh, event for Juneteenth starting 2024 here in Houston. So next year it's going to be like a Juneteenth festival, like the first annual Juneteenth festival here in Houston. And I told him, I'm going to be a part of it. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yes, that's that's what what he was like, okay, yeah, I like yes. that. And so yeah, like, trust in God and everything. <laughs> and so, and I, radical faith, I'm stepping out on God. I'm believing in myself. I have mm -hmm. nothing else to lose, but everything to gain. And so I'm going for mine. I often tell people, either they come up like Cardi B or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. That's what the yeah. pandemic has taught us, yeah. man. Life is too yeah. short. You yes. got to go for yours now. Yeah, yeah. You only get one life. You got to live it to the fullest. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, bless you. <laughs> I told you, it's Texas weather. Got me sneezy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, well, I thank you for coming on the show. It was uh, nice talking to you. Thank uh, you, Miss uh, Keep it. That radical faith up, okay? Yes, ma'am. You as well. You started yeah. it. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys. And thank you so much again for having me. And again, remember, you got a crown on your head. You're rocking it oh so well. And thank you to everybody else out there that was listening and watching. And be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to your podcast and my YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, and remember, whatever it is in life that you guys are feeling you're destined for, you got to manifest, plant, and prepare for it. And it will surely come to you guys. Dip as well. All right, you guys, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening in on our audio interview I did with the lovely uh, host, Miss Tina, of the Black to Black podcast show. As you guys seen, uh, we had a great time talking about my background and where I came from and, and what I went through and overcame, as well as uh, talking about 
the history of Juneteenth and the importance of it and how it's now officially a federal holiday. So uh, most people don't have to go to work now on Juneteenth, as well as the thoughts on uh, affirmative action and how the Supreme Court is now trying to get rid of it, in which affirmative, uh, as those that may not know, affirmative action, uh, it helps favor people of color when it comes to schooling and getting jobs and things of that nature. Uh, it helps uh, move towards equal opportunities for those who would be less fortunate to have an opportunity if it wasn't for affirmative action. And uh, as you guys seen, I, I shared my opinion on it and how I feel about it. It's still the same. Uh, you go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. Uh, however, like I said, in my opinion, reason why I went to a diverse university is because the world is diverse. And so um, that's my thoughts on it. Um, but as far as with affirmative action goes, uh, yes, it has helped a lot of people of color. Um, and, but now, I'm not saying we don't need it, but I'm saying that we can survive without it because it's enough of resources we have um, now on our end to where we don't really necessarily need to rely on affirmative action. I do see how it can still help us in some ways, but now that we've gotten along and progressed uh, with the culture and a lot of, of, of us have, you know, degrees under our belts. There are a lot of uh, black African Americans, if you will, that they have increased the percentage rate for college degrees. And so, um, I'm, I guess I'm indifferent about it, if you will, just to keep it simple, I'm indifferent. Um, but in any case, if you guys liked our uh, topic, what we were talking about, if you have any comments and your thoughts about it, Make sure to show me and share by, you know, liking, sharing, commenting, and definitely subscribing to my YouTube channel, you guys. I truly appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming, you guys, as well as, don't forget, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and you can check out all of my other social media handles, including my Instagram and Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, as well as anybody out there that's looking for motivational speakers, uh, it, looking to do a collaboration with the podcast or any type of interview, just get at your girl. I'm free of charge as of now. You can just go to my website and book your girl as well. Don't forget my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available as well on my website, differenceworld.net. Again, this book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America, and I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, be advised that this is intended for a mature audience and has sensitive content. So if you can't take this type of heat, then still come on to the kitchen. Just get your little fire blanket. You'll be okay. Because that's the point of it all, you guys, is to have these conversations that are uncomfortable, but yet need to be had because they're often swept under the rug and turned a blind eye to. And so, again, the book is not just about rubbing people the wrong way. It's more so talking about unity, accountability, and acknowledgement. More so coming up with ways that we can create systemic change instead of dwelling on systemic racism. And so, again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift, you guys. Again, I appreciate all the love and support that I'm getting. Uh, please keep it coming and don't stop. You know, the reviews, the likes, the shares, the commenting, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I truly, truly appreciate it, you guys. And so with that, we're going to move on. What else we got coming up in Difference World? Tomorrow is Thursday. So you guys know on Thursdays we normally do our pop culture review or movie review. And so I'm looking to do that tomorrow. So be on the lookout. Again, that's why you got to hit that notification bell. So when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn what's going on with your girl. Um, as well as let's do our mental health check for those out there, including myself, that may need it. Uh, for those that's going through any type of mental anguish, including, you know, feeling depression, uh, PTSD, having suicidal thoughts, uh, being bullied, or even going through a relapse. Please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. Talking with a family member, a therapist, picking up a hobby, dropping dead people who mean you know well in life, you know, getting rid of that dead weight in your life. Uh, getting on medication even if that's the case do whatever it is that you have to do that keeps your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end so if you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources please feel free to share with them the crisis hotline number is 
1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. Or for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can visit mentalhealthishealth.us or you can check out 988lifeline.org. As well as for those that are outside of the U.S. and that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys can visit InCounseling.com. Again, InCounseling is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, it is on you to do your own homework, your own research, and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the, own, the captain of your own ship, and you decide where to navigate the waters. Nobody else. And with that being said as well, I want you guys to remember whatever trial and tribulation that you guys are going through at this time in your life, please know that this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option. It's not worth it. So don't do it. And whatever the case that may be when it comes to keeping your mental health in check, do it. Okay. And so we're going to move on and close out with some positive notes and positive vibes, you guys. Again, big shout out to Miss Tina for having me on her show. Her link is below in the description, so be sure to show her some love after you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go show her some love. As well as, you guys, don't forget, whatever it is in life that you are feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and it will surely come to you guys. Difference well. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author different. Go to differenceworld.net.